In this video, we're going to focus on boost converters, circuits that can raise the voltage of a DC source such as batteries or solar cells. As the output voltage increases, the current decreases. So there's going to be a trade-off. At 100% efficiency, the power will be maintained. Now let's talk about how it works. The key player here is the inductor. Now when the switch of this circuit is open, current will flow from the battery, through the inductor, through the diode, charging the capacitor, and through the voltmeter. Due to the high impedance of the circuit, the current flowing in this state will be low. Now, let's talk about what happens when we close the switch. When the switch is closed, current will flow through the inductor and through the switch because we now have a short circuit. And now let's talk about what's happening here. We're going to have a large amount of current flowing in the circuit now. So the current increased from a small value to a large value. When the current increases, the magnetic field in the inductor will expand. And in the process, the inductor is storing energy. And during this process, the potential across the inductor will be positive on the left and negative on the right since it's consuming energy at this point. Now let's talk about what's going to happen when we open the switch. So when the switch opens, this current will no longer be a large current. It's going to become a small current because it can only flow through the inductor and through the voltmeter. So the current is decreasing at this point. So what happens to the magnetic field in the inductor when the current decreases? What would you say? When the current decreases, the magnetic field will collapse. And in the process, the energy that was stored in the inductor is now being released. The polarity of the inductor changes. So it's going to be negative on the left side, positive on the right side. Now in this format, the inductor is in series with the battery. And notice that we have the positive sign connected to the negative sign. The voltages are additive at this point. When the current decreases, the inductor will try to support that current by generating a large voltage. So the voltage that will be across the voltmeter will be greater than the voltage of the battery because these two voltages are added together and the inductor will generate a very large voltage. That large voltage is going to charge the capacitor to a voltage that is greater than the battery. So let's say if the battery's voltage is 12 volts, the capacitor could have a voltage of 50 volts, much higher than the battery's voltage. As the switch is constantly turned on and off, the voltage across the capacitor will continue to increase as each cycle continues. For every cycle that passes, the inductor will transfer energy to the capacitor, increasing the capacitor's voltage. And this voltage will continue to increase until it reaches a state of equilibrium. That is, when the rate at which the inductor transfers energy to the capacitor equals the rate at which the capacitor discharges energy to the voltmeter or the load resistor, that's going to be the point at which it attains its maximum voltage. Now here's a question for you. What is the purpose of the diode in a circuit? What would you say? Why is it there? Notice that the voltage of the capacitor exceeds the voltage of the battery. If the diode wasn't there, the capacitor will discharge through the battery until it reaches a state of equilibrium, until the voltages are the same. But because the diode is there, the capacitor can't dish out current in this direction. It can only send current in this direction. So as each cycle continues, the inductor will transfer energy to the capacitor, increasing its voltage until it reaches a state of equilibrium. And so that's basically how the boost converter works. When a current flowing in the inductor decreases, a voltage is induced across the inductor 
in series with the voltage of the battery creating a sum total that is greater than the battery's voltage charging the capacitor thus giving us a higher output voltage than the input voltage. Now we know that there's no such thing as a free lunch especially as it relates to energy transfer. There is a cost of increasing the voltage and that is the current must be decreased so that the power remains the same assuming 100% efficiency. But now how does the current decrease? We understand why the voltage increases because the inductor induces a voltage when the current flowing through it decreases and thus the sum total is greater than the battery's voltage. So that makes sense. But why do we get a decrease in current? Well, it's important for us to understand that some of the current flows through the inductor, through the diode, and to the voltmeter, but not all of it. A good portion of the current flows through the switch when it's closed. And so we have a net decrease of current that makes it through the output because some of it is lost as it flows back to the battery. And so there's no such thing as a free lunch. If you have a circuit that increases the voltage, you can expect that the current will decrease as well. And so those are the, that's the basic concept of the boost converter circuit, how it increases the voltage and how it decreases the current. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Actually, there are a few other things that I want to mention before ending this video. And that is that the voltage that is induced across the inductor is dependent on the inductance and the rate at which the current is changing with respect to time. So by increasing the inductance of the inductor, you can induce a larger voltage. And the second part of the equation, which tells us how fast the current is changing, the faster the switch turns on and off, the greater the rate of change of current. And so there's going to be a greater voltage induced by the inductor, which leads to a greater output voltage across the capacitor. Now, instead of having a mechanical switch, what you could do is use a MOSFET or a transistor to act as a basically like a fast acting switch. And you can control the rate at which the switch turns on and off by applying an AC signal with a certain frequency. As you increase the frequency, the rate at which the current changes will increase, and thus you're going to have a larger induced voltage by the inductor. So those are the two things that can control the output voltage across the capacitor. Increase in the inductance and the rate at which the current changes, which you can use, you can increase the frequency of the AC source that is applied to a switch like a transistor or a MOSFET. So those are the things I wanted to mention uh, that might be helpful if you're very interested in this type of circuit. Now, there is a warning that you need to consider and take it very seriously because when dealing with inductors, these devices can generate very high voltages, which can lead to a safety issue. So if you're building a circuit like this, you definitely have to be careful and practice safe techniques. So just take that as a warning. Be careful when dealing with inductors. Now I'm going to post some other videos on circuits in the future. So if you like this video and if you want to see more videos relating to this and other stuff, don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I'm going to be posting a lot of good content in the future. So that's it for this video. That's all I got. Now I did make another video on uh, how to increase voltage using an AC signal that is with the help of a transformer. So if you want to take a look at that, uh, feel free to do so. Just type in Transformers Organic Chemistry Tutor in a YouTube search box and you should find it.